What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be breaking down the top 15 stocks that I'm looking to buy right now in the stock market and we're also going to be going over what happened last week in the stock market, breaking down some technicals here on the S&P 500 and I also want to talk to you all about where my head is at as a trader, as an investor, as the stock market's at a pretty interesting spot right now. We're at all time highs, we have stimulus potentially coming up soon, we have the V shot coming out which is going to spike up consumer confidence and we're also wrapping up one of the craziest years ever of 2020 so if you guys find value hit the like button subscribe to the channel and make sure to join the strive smart discord chat the facebook group and claim four stocks from Weibo link down below and guess what the beauty of it guys is all of those links are free of charge. So let's get into it. What happened last week in the stock market? Well, you can see clearly on Friday, we hit an all-time high, 37.26.7. And in fact, we hit an all-time high the day before that, and I believe the day before that as well. So markets are at all-time highs. That's no secret at this point in time, right? And we have a $900 billion stimulus package likely to be passed here pretty soon. And like I said before, the V shot from Pfizer, from Moderna, these are companies that are going to boost up consumer confidence, right? Because people have been pent up in their houses for the most part, right? A lot of people, not too many people, but a lot of people were, uh, you know, if that makes any sense, they've been pent up in their houses, scared to travel, go out, do this, do that, the third. So the idea here is this V-shot is going to make them want to go out and do things, travel, do all these things that they haven't been for almost a year at this point. So we're seeing a lot of this being priced into the market because because remember, the market is a future, what's the word? It's, it reads the future. It's not priced based on what's going on right now. It's pricing future events, right? You guys obviously know that for the most part. And we can see the S&P again last week hit all-time highs two, three times, right? Whatever it was. And we notice here on, what was this, on Wednesday or Thursday, we actually broke out of 37.12, which was the previous all-time high from earlier in the month of December. So that was very bullish. We actually broke it again or actually held 37.12 again on Friday like we did on Thursday in the morning at least. And then we dumped down. We sold off to about 36.90. And what you guys see here, here is on the intraday chart, we sold off pretty much all of Friday despite hitting an all-time high, and we saw a big rally into the close, about 1%, almost 1%, more like 0.8% in the matter of a couple of minutes. What was this, 20 minutes, 15 minutes if that? We saw that massive rally, and what that's telling me, you guys can see it here on the hourly chart, what that's telling me is, okay, bulls are buying up the dip. We can see here this S&P 500, it held the 1 hour 50 S. SMA at a higher low, it rallied up and it closed right under, you guessed it, 37. 12. So for tomorrow and the futures market, which right now the futures are not open, but watch out for the futures, guys. If they're gapping up, if we're seeing a breakout above, let's say, 37.12, 37.15, that means we're most likely squeezing out of this wedge that you see here on the hourly chart and even better on the five-day, five-minute, and we might be able to get higher and potentially back over those previous all-time highs to hit new, fresh all-time highs yet again. So that's what I'm seeing. I mean, we saw the bulls buy up the dip, uh, pretty strong close. We have to see if this momentum continues into tomorrow. And again, we're riding on stimulus right now. We're riding on this V shot being ride, uh, widely spread. And I believe at this point in time, I mean, I'm not a financial advisor by any stretch of the imagination, but at this point in time, since we're having this stimulus come out, I think it's pretty smart to have money in the market. But you have to also realize that the market's at all-time highs. And whenever the market's at all-time highs, it's good to have a little bit of cash as well just in case it dips. And I mean, I've told you all on this channel before, I could see the S&P eventually, maybe early 2021 in January, if it hits, let's say, 3,800 this week or maybe um, you know early 2021 at some point. Let's say if it hits 3,800, I can see it easily pulling back, retracing to this 180 SMA four-hour chart, putting the S&P about 
3500 maybe 3550 it's right around where we've seen previous dips hold right around the 180 SMA 4 hour chart so am I crazy to think S&P might pull down I don't think so which is why again I think having cash is smart to take advantage of that dip but as we're getting stimulus we don't know when that dip's going to come because stimulus devalues the dollar, pushes up stock prices. More people don't want to get into savings accounts, especially because interest rates are low. So they want to invest their money into stocks. So that might even push the markets up even higher. So keep an eye on stimulus, everything that's going on right now in Washington, uh, wherever you want to call it and, and say where it's going on at. But yeah, watch out for that. The V shot and so forth, in my opinion, again, have some money in the market, but also have some cash. That's what I'm doing right now. And that's what I cover here on the channel pretty much every day. So let's talk about now that we covered the market, a little bit of an update there. Let's talk about these 15 stocks. And I'll, I'll be surprised if I make it through without choking on my, on my words here, guys, because uh, my, my voice gets, you know, it gets a little bit cracky towards the end of the video. We get a bit dry here, but we'll, we'll make it. Don't worry. Don't worry. No, uh, stock number one is CIIC. This is one that we talked about last week. This is uh, um, this one's CI Merger Corp. It's taking a rival public, right? They're merging together, and it's it's a spec. And this is a, a company that has ten thousand pre-orders. They have ten thousand unit order with the U. P.S. Not the USPS, the UPS. Don't get those confused because I've seen YouTube videos out there and I, I bet the uh, the creators obviously making a bit of a, a mistake. I mean, it happens, right? We all make mistakes, but they say USPS when it's supposed to be UPS and they make they mix it up because it's, it's very easy to mix up. USPS, UPS, but just realize CIC arrival they're with the UPS. Workhorse is with the USPS, the United States Postal Service, but whatever. CIIC is one that is breaking out. We saw it break out earlier last week, I believe on Wednesday. You guys can see here it broke out of this wedge on the four-hour chart. I believe it went up like 8% that day, maybe even 10%. Yeah, it had a very good day that day. And we actually broke out of $30. We were trading above $30, $31 for a little bit. And then ultimately, we fell a little bit under $30. We're trading at $29 right now. And what you guys notice, if I pull up, let's say, maybe this 20-day chart, you guys can see 29 to $29.80 to $30 is a big resistance from last week. So I think at this point in time for this upcoming week, I think there's upside potential for CIC, no doubt about it. I mean, you guys can see this little wedge that it's in on this hourly chart. If I just erase um, maybe this this line right here, you'll be able to see it a bit better. But we notice it's in this wedge. So I'd like to see it pop out into the mid-29s and ultimately above $30. I think above $30 is where CIC can break out. And from there, I mean, there's a heck of a lot of upside. I believe it could end up getting close to the mid-30s, maybe back up to test $37. So watch out for CIIC. This one has been heating up the past couple of weeks, um, ever since the middle of November. So there could be some more headway in this one. And another one is Teladoc. If I'm not mistaken, I believe I am um, right on this. Kathy Wood, ARK Invest, they've been buying this stock like crazy. Um, this is one that you guys can clearly see here. It is in this downwards trending channel. And we've called out many stocks on the channel, the YouTube channel here, the past couple of weeks that were downtrending in a downtrending channel, followed by a breakout. One of the most popular ones that I called out earlier, I forget, about a couple of weeks ago when it was in the low 80s high 70s was Activision. You guys remember this. We called out Activision on this channel, the YouTube channel, as it broke out of this downtrending channel from about 78 to 80 bucks. We called it out here and now it's up from there over 10, 12 percent. And I think Teladoc is uh, tuning up for a very similar move as to what Activision just did these past couple of days. Um, so Teladoc, watch out for it. That's, that's plain and simple. Uh, one of the top stocks for this week. I think if it breaks $200, I'm going to set an alert there. In, in fact, um, actually, no, wrong button. If it breaks $200, I almost cleared the drawing set. But if it breaks 200 bucks, I think we might be going uh, to 225 maybe mid-200s over the next couple of weeks, maybe 
couple months, right? So I'm going to set an alert to maybe 205 here on Teladoc, create that alert. So if it pops out of the resistance from earlier this month of December at about 205, that is where we might be going again and testing up to those levels at 225, maybe 230. So Teladoc is very interesting here. IPOB is also interesting. Their merger, I believe, completed on the 18th, a couple days ago. And then tomorrow, Monday, if everything goes as planned, I believe they're going to be trading live on on the NASDAQ under ticker symbol OPEN, also known as Open, since they are taking Open Door public. So this is one that's been heating up like crazy. If you guys remember, I picked up shares very early on. I, I forget the exact price because honestly, guys, this isn't a long-term account. And with long-term accounts, you guys know I'm a trader, swing trader. I do day trading a little bit, but with long-term accounts, I don't really check them often. Honestly, I check them maybe once a month. It depends on the account. And I believe it was in the $16 range, if I remember correctly. I ended up picking up about 100 shares, exactly 100 shares of IPOB. But anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about where it's at right now. And it's trading at about $29, $30. And what you guys see is it actually held this higher low that we called out a couple of videos ago at about $25. Bucks, and it rallied up to $30. It actually cracked over the high from uh, last week on the 14th of this month. So at this point, I like IPOB. I think there could be some hype tomorrow around the new ticker open. But overall, I mean, it, it is a bit high. It's at all-time high. So I'd like to get it more towards the 50 SMA on this four-hour chart. But who's to say before it gets to that 50 SMA on this uh, uh, four-hour chart, Who's to say it can't get to $34 first or $33? Who knows? And that's kind of what I'm looking for, maybe for a momentum play up. And then we can maybe short it down on the downside close to that 50 SMA, which could be another entry on the dip. So I'm watching IPOB. SBE is another one that I have an active uh, position open on right now. This is Switchback Energy. This is one that I could have locked in a profit on Friday. I talked about that on Friday's video, but I honestly didn't. I think there's a lot more upside in SBE. I want to see this thing over 40 bucks. I mean, 39 is the next big target. Maybe I trim a little bit at 39. Maybe I add up into the momentum, uh, add more into my position, into the momentum above 37, 38. And then I might trim a little bit at 39. If it breaks above 39, my next target would be 42, 43. That's probably where I'd lock in my profits. And we're nowhere near that now. We're at 36. So I think I don't I think cutting it too loose now might be a mistake especially if you're swing trading it and it all depends on your strategy. I mean if you're day trading go ahead. But for me, I'm here to swing trade it and as a swing trader, I mean in a couple of days I think there's more upside. So for me, I'm not cutting it loose. I think 40 bucks is the target above that 42. That would be even better. And one thing worth noting here is I mean, I got. I think I got a comment saying, watch out for the head and shoulder on SBE. And that's a good point. I mean, watch out for it. You see the left uh, shoulder here, the head. This could be the right shoulder here, especially if we fail at 40 bucks. But if we break above 40, the head and shoulder is scrapped and we might be going up much higher. So watch out for SBE there. And NDM is another one that we've been talking about like crazy here on the channel. And this is one that was in a head and shoulder uh, two weeks ago, I believe, left shoulder, head, right shoulder here. We broke out of this descending triangle this past week, these past two trading days. We broke out of it. You guys can see there was a pretty strong base support at 6 bucks. We were downtrending into that support, but we broke out, so that's very good news. And we also took out 7 bucks. We closed above $7 on Friday. So this is one that I'm just looking to, to see if there's more upside. I mean, if there will, or, or rather, if the upside will continue. And I personally think that it's likely, especially with how last week performed, and especially with these two massive green days we just saw in a row, Thursday, Friday, back to back. I mean, NNDM went from 6 to 7.30 in two days. That's a move of about 15, 16%. 
So, yeah, I think NNDM, the momentum is there. Watch out for a move mid-sevens, maybe $8 on this particular stock. And another one is RIDE, ticker symbol R-I-D-E. This is one that uh, Workhorse uh, owns 10% in. This is Lordstown Motor. And this is a company that has been hit. I mean, the stock's price has been hit from $31 to $13. It recently recovered up to $29, failed to break out of the previous high at $31. Now it's trading right around $18.50 to $18.80, which is a support, old resistance. Um, you know, it's an old resistance from a couple months ago, also from a couple weeks ago, early November. And it actually held that support just a couple trading days ago. So I think it's very vital for a ride to hold $19, make its way back up above 21. I think if 21 can break, that is where we'll see a big pop in Lordstown, probably of about 10, 15 plus percent. And I'm not a genie, guys. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But based on previous technical patterns, I mean, we've broken up above 21 before back in the middle of November and and this thing exploded to from 20 bucks to to $30. So I think 20 21 if that breaks again, hey, we might be making our way high 20s, maybe even $30. So watch out for Lordstown Motors. Now two of the same uh, two of two similar companies here, Target and Walmart. These are ones that we talked about on Friday. I might as well mention them again here because the Sunday uh, the Sunday videos typically get a bit more um, traction, so you guys can obviously more eyeballs get onto these stocks. So there's more money making opportunities for you guys out there. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. Always do your own due diligence, of course, right, guys? But Target is one of these stocks that is down about 12 bucks. We're right around the 180 SMA here four hour chart which has held before as support and we're right around an old resistance at 170 which honestly should hold as support so really what i'm looking for here is a break out of the downtrend on this hourly chart we've been on a downtrending uh, pattern for about a month here and the second it breaks out into 172 173 i think that's confirmation here on target that it's going higher maybe back up into the 180s and very similar here with uh walmart i mean walmart's in a downtrend it's been in a downtrend for about a month and the second it breaks out of 148 150. I think we're going to be gunning for those all-time highs again. And take a look here on the four-hour, very similar to Target. It's holding that 180 SMA, and it's holding the, the uptrend overall from the past six months. So I think Target, Walmart are good, uh, you know, dip buys potentially. Again, I'm not dumping all my cash in right away, but I think on the confirmation of the pop, those are good. And I also like Amazon here, AMZM. Amazon's one that just broke out of the wedge this past week, starting maybe to see some bullish momentum yet again. And it's been on a little decline. And by little, I mean, it's not that little. It's dropped about 15%. That's pretty decent. Um, it's been on a decline ever since the beginning of September. So the past, pretty much the past quarter, Amazon's stock price hasn't done much. And I believe once we get the holiday results in terms of what they did during the holiday, now that more people, like we mentioned earlier, they're they're not really confident to go out. Sure, some people go out, they shop, whatever, but a lot don't. They prefer shopping online due to the CV, and that deals a lot with the vaccine. We'll see, or the V-shot, hopefully... I don't get flagged for that. Whatever, guys. Whatever. Let's see. Let's see if they flag me. But anyway, you guys know, you know, Amazon, it's there's people buying a lot from e-commerce these days. And I believe their sales are going to be great. So we have to see. Maybe next quarter sales, that's what boosts up Amazon stock price, maybe back up to those all-time highs. But this could be the start of it, again, technically speaking, as we've broken out of this wedge. So I'm watching Amazon. Microsoft is another one, ticker symbol MS. FT. This is one that just broke out of 217 recently. We talked about that resistance and 218 as well. And we also talked about this wedge, very similar to Amazon. Amazon just broke out. Well, Microsoft just broke out. And we got news that they're actually not going to be using Intel's chips anymore. And Intel, which was one of those short plays that we mentioned a couple of videos ago, this thing dropped like a brick over 6%. Got rejected at the uh, resistance 
of this downwards channel, and I think there's more downside. And it looks like Microsoft is doing exactly what Amazon, or not Amazon, Apple did um, a couple months ago, and they announced that <clears throat> they're not going to be using Intel's chips in their Mac computers anymore. And in fact, you guys remember I said I was getting that Apple computer, uh, the new with the M1 chip a couple weeks ago. Well, I'm using it right now. And I got to say, it's a pretty nice computer. The operating system's nice. It's running pretty smoothly. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. My previous one was eight gigabytes, so it's not overheating. It could handle more. I'm very happy with it so far. And I'll give you guys maybe a review a little bit later on as I use it a bit more. But overall, it seems like Microsoft is, is doing what Apple's doing. They want to consolidate their chips, make them in-house, cut down costs, make more profits. I mean, that's, hey, hey, I can't blame them for that. Um, so watch out for Microsoft, Amazon, Apple too, while we mention it. I mean, might as well watch Apple. Um, now that it broke above 127, it's holding 127 as support. We might be able to rock it higher from there. Airbnb, guys. Oh, man. We covered this one um, ever since IPO day. And I told you all on this five-day, five-minute, let's take a look. Maybe on this 10-day chart, it'll show it. I said, watch out for this downtrend earlier. This was a couple days ago. I said it's downtrending. But the second we break out of this little four-day downtrend ever since IPO, there could be some upside from there. And what do you know? Three days in a row, Airbnb went ballistic. It went up 8% this day, I think 7% this day. Then on Friday, it went up about 7% and it's up even more after hours. So maybe tomorrow we see Airbnb test those highs from IPO day at about 165. That could be interesting. So I'm watching Airbnb there and heck, it might even break those highs. Who knows? We might be going much higher. So watch Airbnb, watch CRM, Salesforce. This is one that's finally starting to recover. I mean, it's been a while. It's been this whole month of December so far, but we've held 220. Seems like we're rallying up into the almost 230s now. And maybe if CRM could break 230, 232, that is where we might see a, a big pop overall in the stock. We might be able to see a move up to 240, maybe 245, maybe 260. And I know a bunch of people that are in the Discord chat. Again, that's linked down below. It's free. I know a bunch of you all actually own CRM, so let me know in the comments what you guys uh, own in terms of where your price is, uh, your share price, if you want to share it. And uh, just let me know your thoughts on the stock. I think it's a it's a good turnaround play. And, and, wh and while you're at it, if you guys are enjoying the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get 20,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. We're pretty close. It's going to be a close, close, close call. We're about 300 away, 200 away, whatever it's at. So make sure to subscribe and get your four stocks from Weeble, by the way, as well. And let's talk about this next one. We're almost done the video here, guys. PLTR. This is Palantir. Palantir here still in this wedge on the four hour we've seen highs at 33 we've seen lows at 22 from the past couple of trading days and we've seen another pop up to 30 bucks but notice it didn't break the previous high at 33 so what we're seeing is lower highs being made at the same time as we're making higher lows, putting us and squeezing us deeper and deeper and deeper into this wedge. So we're going to pick direction this week, whether it's tomorrow, Tuesday, whatever. We're either going to dump under 25 and maybe continue um, or start a downtrend maybe to the low 20s, or we're either going to break or we're going to break out into 26, 27, potentially break out of 28 bucks and maybe get into the low 30s. So Palantir is definitely one worth watching here. Whether you're a trader that goes long or, gore, uh, or, gores, or goes short, you can make money either way on this. It's that type of stock. It moves up crazy. It moves down crazy. So watch Palantir and two other ones here, guys. How can I make a video without talking about Tesla? TSLA, they are going to be included officially in the S&P 500 on Monday. The SPX S&P 500 inclusion is on Monday. So we've seen Tesla run up to almost 700 bucks. And I've said here on the channel, I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'm not a saint. I'm not a saint. But if... If we see a bit of selling, I wouldn't be surprised. That's what I think could happen. We might see a bit of a relief, 
not a relief rally, a relief sell-off, because this thing, quite honestly, is overbought. We might see a bit of a sell-off after the inclusion, uh, maybe down to about... In a perfect world, let's say I could pick the prices, you know, whatever I want them to be. In a perfect world, I would say Tesla, maybe 540. That would be great. Right around this 50 or 180 SMA, rather, on the four hour chart. Right around that all time high from the beginning of September. That would be great for it to hold there as support and then maybe rally up from there. But. It's not a perfect world. I can't pick the prices, so we don't know what's going to happen. But either way, Tesla's worth watching here this week. And same with NEO. I can't make a video as well not talking about NEO. Same with Tesla pretty much, guys. So NEO is worth watching here. On Friday, it did well up almost 2%. After hours, it's up a decent amount as well. And I think NEO over $48 is breakout territory. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And we're already breaking out, it seems like, out of this wedge. But once 48 breaks, I think there's going to be a big momentum shift into the 50s, maybe back up into the mid-50s. So NEO is very much worth watching here, at least in my opinion. I'm watching it for sure. As this head and shoulder didn't really seem to play out. I mean, if it did play out... I mean, it kind of did play out, but if it completed, it would have gone down low 30s, maybe high 20s. But the fact that we held 40, we popped out, we're mid-high 40s now, that's a good sign that momentum is shifting. So overall, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit the like button for me. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 20,000 subscribers. We're so close. And don't forget to join the Discord chat, the Facebook group. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram at StossRFest, and also uh, claim your four stocks from Webull, link down below. All you have to do is deposit $100, and you get four stocks valued up to $1,600, and if you wish to do so, you can just take out that 100 bucks that you initially deposited and keep those four stocks, and you literally just made money on putting 100 bucks in. So all of those are linked down below. They're free of charge to join, to follow. Everything's free down below guys so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching as always i really appreciate you all hope you guys crush the markets this week stay safe out there as always thanks again for watching peace out